So Spain is famously known for their tapas, which are basically little appetizers that you nibble on before a meal. Anyways, with that being said, today I'm going to show you how to make a different style Spanish tapa one that is super popular here in Spain. We're talking Spanish pinchos. Now, pinchos are very similar to tapas. They're a smaller in portion of size, and you place them over a piece of baguette bread that you eat in two or three bites, folks. That is exactly what we're doing today. I'm going to show you how to make five classic Spanish pinchos that pack some serious Spanish flavors. And let me tell you, all five of these pinchos are super easy to make at home. They're made with very simple everyday ingredients that you can easily find at your supermarket. You can serve them either as an appetizer or make them all at the same time and serve them as a main course. Either way, the flavor of these pinchos are going to instantly transport you to beautiful España. Really quick before we begin, a shout out to one of my newest patrons, James Matthew Nealon. Once again, James, thank you so much for becoming a patron of Spain on Fork. It's thanks to you and the rest of my patrons why Spain on Fork continues to move forward. If you're not a patron, consider becoming one. It really helps me with ingredients and equipment to continue making videos like this. You'll find my patron link in the description box below and iCard above. So before we begin, let's talk about the bread you're gonna need to make these Spanish pinchos. I'm using a Spanish barra de pan, which is the same thing as a baguette. The secret, make sure it's got a crunchy exterior to it. Then when you add the ingredients into the bread, it doesn't get soggy. If the baguette you're using or the bread you're using doesn't have any crunch to it, no big deal. Just after you cut it, lightly toast it, that way it has some structure to it. Now to make these pinchos, I'm gonna cut this baguette into diagonal slices that are one inch thick, which is about 2.5 centimeters. All right, now that we have our pieces of bread ready, let's start making our Spanish pinchos. For the first one, we are making Spanish tomato bread with manchego cheese. This is such a classic pincho here in Spain. It's very easy to put together and the flavors are very simple, but absolutely delicious. Let's begin by finely grating one tomato into a bowl. Finely grating one large clove of garlic into the tomato. and mixing these two ingredients together. Then I'm gonna grab our tomato and garlic mixture and start adding it on top of some pieces of bread, making sure it's evenly spread out and remember to be generous here. Then we'll lightly season with a little sea salt and add in some slices of manchego cheese the one that I'm using has been aged for six months and I cut the slices into a thickness of one eighth of an inch, which is a little over a quarter centimeter. We'll sprinkle it with some freshly chopped parsley and we'll pierce a toothpick in the middle of each piece of bread to hold all the ingredients together. And we'll top it off with a kiss of extra virgin olive oil. Our first Spanish pinchos done, Spanish tomato bread with manchego cheese. This is known here in Spain as pan con tomate y queso manchego. So easy to put together, so many great flavors to it. Try this at home, you are not gonna believe how good this is. Moving on to our second Spanish pincho, we're making a Spanish tuna and anchovy pincho. This one right here is one of the most popular ones in all of Spain. It's got so many great flavors to it, and once again, it's super easy to put together. I'm gonna begin by grabbing two cans of tuna in olive oil and draining them into a fine sieve with a bowl underneath. The size of each can is 80 grams, which is about three ounces. And we'll give the tuna a quick mix just to release any of the excess oil, but you don't want to overmix it, otherwise it's going to get too dry. And we'll add the tuna over some pieces of bread, making sure it's evenly spread out. And once again, remember to be generous here. Then I'm going to add in some strips of roasted red bell pepper over the tuna. Add an anchovy over the roasted peppers. The ones that I'm using are canned Spanish anchovies in olive oil. 
and we'll pierce a green olive with a toothpick and place it over the bread to hold all the ingredients together. Our second Spanish pincho is done, a Spanish tuna and anchovy pincho. This is known here in Spain as atun con anchoas. This is one of my personal favorite pinchos, so many great flavors, and the best part you saw this, so easy to put together. For our third pincho recipe, we are making a Spanish spinach tortilla pincho. Once again, this is one of the most classic pinchos here in Spain. It's got so many bold flavors to it. You've got those eggs with the spinach, some roasted peppers and manchego cheese, all of these ingredients combined. It's an explosion of so much goodness. Let's begin by cracking in four cage-free organic eggs into a bowl. Now you can use whatever eggs you like, but remember the old saying, the higher the quality of the ingredients, the better the overall flavor. I'm going to season the eggs with a little sea salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. And I'm going to whisk the eggs together until they're well combined. For the next step, I'm going to grab a small non-stick fry pan. Very important to use non-stick here, that way the eggs don't stick to the pan. I'm going to heat this with a medium heat and add in two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, which is 30 milliliters. After heating the olive oil for two minutes on a medium heat, I'm gonna start adding some fresh spinach into the pan and mixing it around with that olive oil that we'd easily wilt. I'm gonna be adding in a total of two cups, which is 100 grams. I like to add it in there in batches, that way it doesn't overflow out of the pan. And as the spinach begins to wilt, add more fresh spinach into the pan and mix it with that olive oil and continue to do this until all the spinach has been added into the pan. Once all the spinach has been added into the pan and it's fully wilted, I'm going to lower the fire to a low medium heat and add in our whisked eggs. And I'm going to give this a quick mix, that way all the ingredients are evenly distributed. After about two minutes, I'm going to run a spatula through the outer edges of the tortilla. This is just to ensure that it's not stuck to the pan. About four minutes after adding the eggs into the pan, it's time to flip it to cook the other side. This is a very simple technique. You want to use a plate that's slightly smaller than the pan, that way it fits in there like a glove. Place one hand on the plate and with the other hand, flip the pan into the plate. And then slide the tortilla back into the pan to cook the other side. And just get in there with a spatula and push down on it, that way all the ingredients are evenly distributed and you want to compact the tortilla from the outer edges towards the center. This is what gives it that classic rounded edge. After a total cooking time of eight minutes, since we added the eggs in there, that's four minutes per side, this Spanish tortilla should be perfectly cooked. I'm gonna remove it from the heat, transfer it into a cutting board, and cut it into slices. Now let's start assembling our pinchos. I'm gonna add in some roasted red bell peppers over some pieces of bread. These are jarred and I cut each one in half. Then we'll add in a piece of our Spanish tortilla over the roasted peppers. And we'll top it off with a slice of manchego cheese once again, this one's been aged for six months and the thickness of the slices are one eighth of an inch, which is a little over a quarter centimeter. And we'll pierce each pincho with a toothpick to hold all the ingredients together. Our third Spanish pincho is done. This is known here in Spain as una tortilla de espinacas con pimientos y queso manchego. So many beautiful bold flavors to it and you saw it's so easy to put together. Try this one and it's gonna instantly transport you to beautiful Spain. Moving down the list to our fourth Spanish pincho, we are making one of the most iconic pinchos that hail from Spain. We are talking a Spanish potato salad pincho. This is made with very simple ingredients, but when you combine them all together, truly is one of the greatest flavors ever. But the best thing here is how easy it is to put together. I'm gonna begin by adding in one boiled potato into a bowl. I cut it into small pieces that are a quarter inch thick, which is a little over half a centimeter. 
I'm also going to add in two hard boiled eggs. Once again, I cut it into small pieces that are a quarter inch thick, which is a little over half a centimeter. Then we'll add in a tomato that's been roughly chopped. About 10 green Spanish olives that have been roughly chopped. A generous half cup of mayonnaise, which is 125 grams. Two tablespoons of finely chopped chives, which is eight grams. And season everything with sea salt. And freshly cracked black pepper. And for the final ingredient, we'll finely grate in one large clove of garlic. And we're going to give this a mix until all the ingredients are well mixed together. And start adding the potato salad over some pieces of bread, making sure it's evenly spread around. And once again, remember to be generous here. The more potato salad, the better these pinchos are going to taste. And for the final step, we'll pierce a green olive with a toothpick and place it over the potato salad. Our fourth Spanish pincho is done, a Spanish potato salad pincho. This is known here in Spain as ensaladilla rusa. So many great flavors to it, but you saw it. Simple basic ingredients, easy to put together. This is what Spanish cuisine is all about. For our fifth and final Spanish pincho, we are making one of my personal favorite pinchos. We're talking a Spanish garlic shrimp pincho. This is what Spanish food is all about. We've got some beautiful sauteed shrimp with a ton of garlic and a kiss of sweet smoked Spanish paprika. In my opinion, it doesn't get better than this. Let's begin by grabbing a fry pan, heating it with a medium high heat, and adding in a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, which is about 60 milliliters. After heating the olive oil for one minute, you don't want it to get too hot. I'm going to add in four cloves of garlic that I thinly sliced and start mixing the garlic around with that olive oil. You want to mix this continuously. That way those slices of garlic are evenly sauteed. After about 30 seconds, I'm going to start adding in some raw shrimp into the pan. These are already peeled and deveined and I season them with sea salt and black pepper. After about one minute, I'm going to flip the shrimp to cook the other side. After a total cooking time of two minutes on the shrimp, that's one minute per side, I'm going to add in half a teaspoon of sweet smoked Spanish paprika. This is 1.15 grams. And we'll give this a quick mix, that way all these ingredients are evenly mixed together. Then we'll remove the pan from the heat, add the shrimp over some pieces of bread, grab the garlic that's left over in the pan and place it over the shrimp. And we'll sprinkle the pinchos with some freshly chopped parsley. and we'll pierce them with a toothpick to hold all the ingredients together. Check it out, our fifth and final Spanish pincho is done. Like I told you earlier, this is one of my personal favorite ones, and this is known here in Spain as gamba salajillo con pimentón. It just doesn't get better than this, folks. You saw it, five classic Spanish pinchos, all of them very easy to make and loaded with beautiful Spanish flavors. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that like button, leave me a comment below, and if you're not subscribed, you know what to do, smash that subscribe button. Till the next time, hasta luego.